And now it's my pleasure to welcome Mann UCLA chemistry teacher and alumna of UCLA teacher education program, Darlene Tu. Thank you. Good morning. As Chancellor Block mentioned, I am a teacher at Mann UCLA Community School. I have the privilege of working with a lively, hilarious, bright, and resilient group of 10th graders. Students are thought of as the future of our society, and as a teacher, I get a firsthand glimpse of that every day. This rising generation of students has already made their presence known on the world stage. Greta Thunberg has rallied folks from all ages around the world to take action against climate change now. However, she's not the only student activist making her voice heard. Students of color who live in communities disproportionately suffering from the effects of climate change have been calling us to action for years. These young activists have proven to us that age is not a prerequisite for making an impact. In fact, their young age may be an asset that helps our society reimagine a new way of life. It is inspiring to hear these stories of students around the world, but the reason I teach about environment and climate change is for these students right here. My students did not land Time Magazine's People of the Year cover yesterday. They have not spoken to the UN Assembly. They haven't captivated thousands of people around the world with their message for change yet. Right now, my students are doing their best of being teenagers. They share the latest viral videos with each other. They play basketball and soccer every chance they have to be outside. They're learning how to speak Chinese, figuring out how to balance chemical equations, and tackling their pre-calculus homework. They try their best to be regular teenagers, despite living in an area bordered by four major freeways. These students are more vulnerable to dangerous pollutants. A clear sky free of LA's iconic smog layer is an atypical sight for them. They grow increasingly used to hot summer days in October and canceled sports practice due to the smoke from our local wildfires. Yet, to my students, climate change was an issue affecting the polar bears in Antarctica, raising the sea levels around islands on the other side of the world, and causing animals that they have only seen pictures of go extinct. So to start my chemistry class off, I had my students calculate their ecological footprint. Students inputted their daily habits and lifestyles into an online quiz and were horrified to learn that if everyone on Earth lived the same lifestyle as they did, we would need an average of one and a half to two Earths to sustain us. But miss, we only have one Earth. It gets worse. Imagine the look on my students' faces when I told them that if everyone on Earth lived the same lifestyle as the average American, we would need an average of four Earths to sustain us. The lesson opened us up to a frank discussion about the limitations of the Earth we live on. Since that lesson, we have continued learning about climate change and has made my students realize that the reality of their future is going to be very different from what they imagined. More importantly, they're realizing they are the ones that are going to have to fix it. The ecological footprint lesson illuminated some hard truths of climate change for me as well. One could say that it is commendable that my students are leading lifestyles that are more environmentally friendly than the average American. But I know that my students, while they truly do care for the environment, they don't take three buses to and from school every day because they're eco-conscious. My students aren't avoiding airplane flights around the world because they want to reduce their carbon footprint. They definitely aren't squeezing multiple families into a two-bedroom apartment to save on their energy use either. My students contribute less to the climate change crisis, but are disproportionately more affected by the adverse effects of it. There is a desperate need for environmental and climate change literacy for all students, because they are the ones who deserve and need to be at the table when decisions are being made about their future. We are not working for our students. We need to work with them. Today, we are privileged to be in a space that has brought together teachers, professors, researchers, students, and policymakers. Any actions that we take must be rooted in the realities of historic and systemic environmental injustices. Through partnership and collaboration, we can all play a part to ensure that the next generation of students are globally competent, environmentally literate learners and leaders. Thank you.